Welcome to ATCM. Today I will be presenting a clinical case. Okay. Sir, uh, one 51 year old female hailing from Kollam uh, presented with complaints of numbness and uh, pins and needle type pricking type pain in the bilateral lower and upper limb since past nine months. Okay. Complaint of swaying and imbalance while walking since past nine months and history of palpitation and dizziness and generalized tiredness since past two months and history of loss of appetite and loss of weight since past nine months and also history of sleep disturbances was present. She was apparently normal nine months back. Initially, uh, she had developed numbness and uh, this prince and anus pricking type pain in the bilateral lower limb, which later progressed to uh, involving the bilateral upper limb and fingers. And uh, she has a history of uh, swaying while walking, which initially she, w she used to do her daily routine by herself. Mm. For the past two months, she is requiring the help of one of the bystanders for walking in view of uh, significant uh, imbalance while walking. And uh, she also gives history of a loss of appetite and loss of weight of 5 kilos in the past 3 to 4 months and history of sleep disturbances since 2 months. And uh, no history of chest pain, dyspnea, orthopnea, uh, PND, fever, uh, no history of uh, evening rise of temperature. And personal history, sir, she takes mi mixed diet and the history of reduced sleep and appetite is present and normal bowel and bladder habits and uh, no history of uh, no history of uh, oligomenorrhea or polymenorrhea and uh, family history history of malignancy in the older sister was present who passed away at the age of 59 A exact history of malignancy okay. was not known to the bystander on, uh, and on examination she is conscious oriented pulse rate is 88 beats per minute BP 12080, saturation 99% on rumor, and uh, pallor present, pallor is present, ictiris is present, no sinus, uh, no sinosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy, and edema. And uh, on local examination, uh, tongue is flat with uh, absence of uh, papillae, and CVS S1, S2 heard, no murmurs, and uh, respiratory system, bilateral air entry present, normal vesicular breath sounds, abdomen soft, non tender, and no organomegaly. And uh, CNS, pupil bilateral equal and reactive, tone is normal, power is 4 by 5 in the bilateral upper limb and uh, th uh, 3 by 5 in the bilateral lower limb. And deep and on reflexes, uh, plus 2 in bilateral bicep, tricep, knee and ankle and plantar bilateral flexor. And uh, finger nose test was negative and uh, no dysdiadokinesia. Sensory system, sensory fine examination is normal, fine touch and uh, pinprick sensation is normal. Joint position is reduced in the bilateral lower limb and vibration sense is reduced in the bilateral lower limb. And uh, gait and rhombus could not be assessed because as soon as uh, we make a stand, she was able, unable to maintain balance and she was falling back. Okay. And uh, what and is it called as? Gait attacks. Gait attacks is walking mm -hmm. behind is going to either side. Is it for us? When you stand it, stand up itself, you are falling sideways. Trungal attacks. Yeah. Trungal attacks means a patient is unable to stand itself. Yeah. So immediately falls. Mm -hmm. That is a sign of uh, either bilateral cerebella or peripheral neuro, severe peripheral neuro. Trungal attacks. Yeah. Yeah. And her initial investigations, e ECG was showing a normal sinus rhythm and x-rays were normal. Initial uh, investigations... What is your clinical diagnosis from this? Clinical diagnosis uh, as a joint position, vibration and peripheral neuropathy symptoms are there. We are suspecting a... Is it a large fiber neuropathy, small fiber neuropathy? Large fiber neuropathy as okay. a joint a joint position and vibration. Okay, what are the common reasons for large large fiber neuropathy? Large fiber neuropathy, common reasons will be B12 deficiency okay. uh, and uh, diabetes. diabetes. Diabetes is the most common cause for large fiber neuropathy and B12 deficiency is also can produce large fiber neuropathy. Okay. And uh, initial investigations were showing uh, pancytopenia and uh, uh, WBC count 3.5. And hemoglobin 8.16 and platelet 2 lakh 31,000. Uh, sorry, 1, 1 lakh 31,000. And uh, MCV was uh, one, 114 femtoliters. Is it high or no? Yes, it is, is it elevated. And uh, 
our initial retic count was 5.68 and absolute retic count was 112 which is in the normal range okay since anemia is there we've done a retic count what is the reticular cell production index is it something important in this case or not important it is important sir. how it is important to assess the uh, anemia after treatment yes after treatment you can see this production index if it is improving drastically with your treatment then it is mostly b12 deficiency yes. and uh, our electrolytes were normal so potassium was 4.1 sodium was 135 mm. and in view of elevated mcv and we've sent for a serum b12 values. what are the reasons for elevated mcv with anemia uh, macrocytosis macrocytosis what are the reasons Um, B12 deficiency, folic acid deficiency. That you know that it is B12 deficiency. That's why you are telling. Common causes. B12 deficiency is one of the most common causes. Other than that, where will you get megaloblastic anemia? Megal- where all you will get megaloblastic anemia? Uh, we'll be getting it in uh, folic acid and B12 deficiency. Any other conditions? Megaloblastic anemia is a big chapter for you. There are a lot of conditions which can produce megaloblastic anemia. From that, you have to rule out all other causes. Then only you can make B12 deficiency. Okay. What is this megaloblastic anemia? What is the meaning of that? Why there are larger cells? Uh, maturation lacks. Okay. So wherever there is maturation lacks, uh, like uh, uh, before the growth. they are all you get a larger cell so drugs can be there infections can be there peripheral uh, uh, la- like uh, hemolysis can be a reason b12 deficiency can be a reason folic acid but what commonly we are seeing is b12 deficiency and uh, folic acid but if you go to oncology there are a lot of drugs or diseases which can produce megaloblastic anemia okay what about it is uh, b12 deficiency is one of the commonest yes. condition Sir, uh, and the we've uh, and bilirubin is also elevated, sir. What Do, does it mean? Means uh, uh, RBC are getting sequestrated in the spleen and okay. Okay. because of the large size of the okay. RBC. And uh, we've sent for a serum B12 level, mm. which was found to be low, ninety six point seven four. Normal ranges between one out seven or one ninety seven to seven seventy one. Okay. and uh, so next thing is to and we've sent for a peripheral smear mm-hmm. that was showing macrocytic anemia with mm-hmm. leukopenia okay. and hypersegmented neutrophils which is a classical sign for okay um, and uh, uh, and the next thing was to find out what is causing for the b12 deficiency in a patient who's before that tell me what are the clinical findings of b12 deficiency peripheral neuropathy okay peripheral yeah. neuropathy and uh, history of neuropsychiatric okay reversible dementia reversible dementia Then. and uh, uh, and ataxia and that is peripheral yeah. neuropathy yeah. then glossitis glossitis we will tell all mbbs level answers we will tell pg level answer especially medicine subacute combined oh. subacute combined degeneration mm-hmm. of code what is that so you can get anemia megaloblastic you can get peripheral neuropathy you can get glossitis uh, neckal pigmentation so many features can be there but subacute combined degeneration is one of the most prominent neurological problem in b12 deficiency what is it uh, it uh, results in uh, co- complaints of it results in er- uh, spastic paralysis with eryflexia eref- spastic paralysis with eryflexia okay and eryflexia is due to is due to is correct what he told is correct it is not required for emergency medicine it is required for medicine examination so you get a case of uh, subacute combined degeneration in medicine examination spastic uh, cord paralysis is classical finding but eryflexia or uh, hyperreflexia is a classical feature what is the reason for that can you tell me about reflex arc what is a reflex arc We all learn reflex arc in physiology. What is it? Yeah? When you uh, do a knee jerk, there is a 
there is a receptor from that receptor the electricity or uh, current travels to that receptor to spinal cord there is a sender there that gives some uh, command and that command will go to the joint or muscles okay suppose any of these uh, components are damaged what will happen to the reflex so afferent deferent sender uh, receptors effector muscles any of these are damaged what will happen to the reflex the reflex the yeah, reflex yeah. so here peripheral neuropathy is there the sensations are not carried to spinal cord that is a simple answer okay so even if you are tapping on your knee jerk it will not be reflected in the spinal cord center so patient will not notice uh, or spinal cord will not notice a stimulus is there so it will not contract that is a reason for uh, areflexia in subacute combined degeneration so where is the lesion in subacute combined degeneration which part of the spinal cord the lesion is there afferent which part of the spinal cord cervical thoracic lumbar sacral the thoracic thoracic okay so thoracic area is the lesion and there is a lesion in the peripheral uh, nerves also okay that's why you are getting spastic para paraparesis with absent reflexes okay that will be the classical presentation second neurological problem is dementia third one will be in the eyes what is it optic neuro optic neuro neuropathy okay so these are the common clinical neurological clinical problems of b12 deficiency blood there will be megaloblastic anemia where else you can have problem atrophic gastrite atrophic uh, tongue and same thing can happen in the uh, stomach also okay and uh, the next thing was uh, we've sent for a serum uh, so you have to do a, uh, you have to you have done a peripheral uh, smear yes. you have done a b12 level yes, sir. that is low okay next thing was we've sent for a serum gastrin levels okay. and serum intrinsic uh, factor intrinsic factor levels okay. and uh, serum anti parietal cell antibody okay and uh, uh, all these three in this uh, ideally uh, in this patient this serum anti uh, anti parietal antibody came out to be positive positive okay so intrinsic anti intrinsic factor antibodies are present uh, in this okay. and present and serum gastrin levels were normal in this patient okay. and uh, we've done a endoscopy to rule out any uh, causes of malabsorption like okay. atrophic gastritis okay. and this patient had a loss of gastric folds indicating okay. of atrophic gastritis okay. which was later confirmed by a biopsy okay and ideally in a patient with uh, pernicious anemia gastrin levels will be high in view of this uh, negative feedback okay and uh, uh, and anti parietal cell antibody and uh, intrinsic anti intrinsic factor antibody will be positive okay uh, and which will uh, pernicious anemia which will later lead to atrophic gastritis okay in this patient might not be fitting everything but the antibodies are more significant okay. than the gastrin levels so okay. that was positive okay and finally the treatment we gave was uh, parenteral vitamin b12 since okay. the absorption is impaired in this patient okay for the how do you give b12 uh, iv for the Uh, 1000 micrograms uh, OD for 7 days initially okay. and then, then once a week okay. for one month and then, then uh, once a month for life long right right then what the what else you give along with b12 along with you b12. don't give that what will happen uh, folic acid we okay, give if you don't one. give folic acid what will happen uh, if the folic acid levels are low uh, the neurological manifestations okay. will improve with so, b12 but hematological won't improve. with vitolenol is it uh, reverse it is reverse so the problem is if you are giving b12 alone that will improve the uh, b uh, like uh, anemia part for that b, uh, folic acid will be utilized from the neuronal tissue it, the body will take uh, neuronal b, b, folic acid and make uh, anemia correct, get corrected what will happen to the cns that will worsen okay it will worsen and patient will become bad okay that's why we have to give always folic acid along with b12 okay so whatever it, uh, it may you have to give folic acid along with b12 and uh, that will correct both the issues what is the clinical finding of folic acid deficiency 
folic acid deficiency patient will have a uh, more prominent hematological manifestation so both almost similar it that also have neurological problem that also will have hematological problem hematological po- problem will be like in a different uh, way presentation will be in different way we have seen methotrexate induced folic acid deficiency and neutropenia will be a predominant problem here anemia will be a predominant problem other one neutropenia will be a predominant problem that recently we have admitted one case okay so whatever it may uh, it is uh, you have to correct both so that uh, anemia part will be corrected at the same time patient will not deteriorate in the neurological part is this neurological problem reversible or irreversible is reversible sir. initially it is reversible but if you don't treat it properly or if you delay treatment then it will become a irreversible problem okay what are the reversible cause of dementia this is one of the reversible cause of dementia bit and uh, yes time time in deficiency yes niacin yes. 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 deficiency okay then so three vitamins b12 thiamine and niacin okay these three things can produce reversible dementias other than that the other conditions which can reverse you admit lot of geriatric cases no what is nph normal pressure normal pressure hydrocephalus what is the clinical finding of that uh, dementia urinary incontinence urinary incontinence attacks and dementia so once you remove some csf they will improve okay hypothyroidism yes. there is also a reversible cause for dementia if you treat hypothyroidism properly the patient will become normal okay how long you have to continue b12 in this patient lifelong lifelong here we have to give lifelong whereas in uh, vegetarian diet induced b12 deficiency one or two years you can treat then oral tablets can be sufficient can we give oral tablets here no sir it is not going to get absorbed any other uh, diseases which can prevent the absorption of b12 uh, any other disease gastric 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 surgery Yes. gastric surgeries most of the gastric surgeries and infection in the stomach chronic infections okay mal absorption syndromes they also will not have b12 absorption so there also you have to give im or iv b12 okay anything else you want to add okay you want to give iron in this patient in this patient uh, no sir why is anemia anemia but uh, iron levels were normal in this patient okay zero mal okay can you get uh, in same patient uh, b- b12 deficiency and iron deficiency what type of blood picture you get in that case uh, it is at mixed and both the microcytic there is a name for that dimorphic anemia dimorphic anemia okay what is myelothysis anemia there are different syndromes are myelodysplastic syndrome myelothysis anemia okay so you have to read all these things where all these conditions you get some sort of dimorphic anemias okay you get large cells they are immature cells you get smaller cells because of iron deficiency anemia a lot of conditions you can get dimorphic anemias okay this patient is only megaloblastic anemia yes okay anything else you want to add Have you read this shilling's test previously we used to do so okay, nowadays, nowadays it is very difficult to do this perform this test so what will be the simple method to treat this well uh, diagnose this case trial of vitamin b12 yes give a trial of vitamin b12 then what you will observe uh, neurological neurological manner reticulocyte production index will double in 48 hours that is the most important uh, thing we can do in all settings okay what you have told is neurological it takes some time maybe 2 3 weeks it will take okay but reticulocyte production index that's why it is important in this type of cases you can see the visible change you can give tablets you don't see the response give injection immediately patient respond to your treatment okay vision any problem was there this patient no sir there was no issue so any uh, this one uh, mental disturbances only this reduced sleep that was uh, some amount problem. of anxiety was okay 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 Thank you. Thank you so much.